I came out of anesthetic at about, um, about six o'clock yesterday. I'm up and about, and I have a vagina. <sighs> Got a lovely view of the cockpit. I can't go there anymore. The most difficult, but also the most amazing thing I've done in my life. How's it going guys, girls, and be pals? I'm Alice from Wonderland, your favorite cute trans girl, and it's time. It is finally time for this video. You all have been waiting for it for a long, long time. Today, I'm going to be telling you all about my experience getting gender reassignment surgery and doing this to help people like me who are interested in the surgery or are perhaps looking for more information on it. Hopefully, I can provide you with a little window into my life here. Please, right now, before we start, do me a favor and like this video and share it with anyone else you know who is interested in or is possibly looking into getting this surgery. And maybe we together can help them be more informed and more prepared for what they're about to go through. First off, let me get you up to speed on where I'm at right now and what exactly has happened thus far. On the 19th of September 2023, I had my first operation at the Phuket Plastic Surgery Institute with Dr. Sangwan Kunaporn. On the 25th of September, I had my final operation, which was the skin graft, and that technically makes my update the 25th. So, Christmas Day was my three month surgery milestone. As of recording this, it is currently the 8th of January. Now I wanna preface this video by saying that, unfortunately, my journey is not over. I was really hoping it would be, um, but it isn't. This is a very complex surgery to get right. I'm not totally happy with the aesthetics of my vagina at this stage, and I'm going to be going back for an aesthetic revision surgery. I may get a breast augmentation while I'm there because, that said, every other part of my surgery was a total success and I'm very pleased about that. Everything works like it's supposed to, it feels great, and really my only issue is cosmetic and it's not even a big one. Because of all of that, I'm gonna refrain from making my final judgment on getting surgery in Thailand until after I've had that revision, and probably closer to the end of this year, I'm gonna make a second series of videos a bit more final and with a bit more focus on the actual surgery itself. So my story is a bit of a bumpy one. It starts with me trying to get surgery with the only surgeon in New Zealand. Long story short, there were some dodgy dealings. The surgeon in New Zealand, because of circumstances and because of the hospital costs in New Zealand, was sort of price gouging massively. I'm not gonna get into that whole thing right now, but it did piss me off. This video here has a bit more detail. The next thing that happened on the timeline is that while I was still planning to go ahead with the surgery in New Zealand, I went and saw a psychologist for a sign off. Now, I assume a lot of you have a few questions about this. You need to be signed off by a mental health professional. That is the bottom line. No surgeon will talk to you unless you have been signed off by a psychologist. And to be perfectly honest, that's completely reasonable because this is a huge surgery. It is a massive undertaking. It will change the rest of your life and the surgery itself is extremely difficult to go through. So no surgeon is gonna to talk to you unless they know for sure that you can handle this. Make plans and be prepared to get that sign off. Be aware, and this caught me out by surprise as well, that it could be expensive. Psychologists are not cheap. You may be going through insurance, that's awesome. If they cover that, fuck yeah, girl. But for the rest of us, it's probably gonna cost you a couple thousand dollars to get that psychologist sign off. Now, around March last year, I started to look at other options for where I could get this surgery. After hearing from a few past patients and talking to a couple of agents, I ultimately decided to get my surgery done in Thailand at the Phuket Plastic Surgery Institute with Dr. Sangwan Kunaporn, who I'd heard great things about. We did a pre-op email consult, I sent over some photos, he sent through his recommendations and pricing and we ended up booking a date of September the 19th for the surgery. I booked my flights and accommodation and we were more or less good to go. Anyway, time went by and I got my finances in order. I took out a loan, etc, etc. Two weeks prior to surgery, I had to stop my hormone therapy. You're also not allowed to drink or take any drugs of any form for like four weeks prior to surgery, and that includes smoking. Don't smoke. Eventually, myself and my mother flew over to Thailand and checked into our hotel. Goodbye, Ru. I'll see you in three weeks. I miss you, KK. Oh, the sky train just gone past. Cool. Smile. Beautifully. Okay.
Alright, we made it. Fucking hell. That was a mission. We're at the hotel now. We're just waiting to check in at 2 o'clock. It is so hot here. I actually feel lightheaded, so I'm gonna try not to go anywhere. Alright, well. We're in Thailand. <laughs> um, so we're staying in Patong City at the Andakira Hotel. It's quite lovely, as you can see. So today is Sunday. Monday tomorrow is my consultation day. We've done some really fun stuff today. It's about, um, it's almost four o'clock. This morning we were up early. We did a little bit of exploring because this is really my only free day, seeing as consultation is tomorrow on the Monday. So today we went and saw a little bit of Patong. We, um, we walked all the way from the hotel to the beach, walked along that a little bit, found a few stores, did a little bit of shopping, found out what the markets are like. It is so unbelievably different to New Zealand. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. A lot of areas are really beautiful, but then just down the block is something in complete and utter disrepair. It is also so fucking hot. <laughs> it's like 30 degrees outside and humid. It is deadly. It's one of the reasons why I went and got this outfit. Yeah, so I tried this on and it's, it's super, super light. It's got like this weird thing. It looks gorgeous. It fits me really well. It's just perfect for this humid weather. Speaking of, it's so humid that immediately when I got home, I jumped in the shower. So yeah, apologies for that, but you've got makeup with Alice for a little bit. But yeah, so Monday, tomorrow is the consultation. That's kind of the big day. So I'm really nervous for that. Once, once I'm admitted to hospital and I'm sitting on the bed, I think I'll be totally fine. It's just, I've come such a long way and I've just got one last hurdle to jump over and then we're all good for surgery. So I'm feeling really nervous and really anxious, you know. Yesterday I was just an absolute ball of anxiety, but today I'm doing a lot better. Not sure, not sure why. I think um, going shopping helped take my mind off of things a little bit and then let me step back and reassess, but I should be fine. Fingers crossed, nothing comes up. All I gotta do is head in there, go through their tests, make the payment, and then we're all good for surgery. And once, once that is off my conscience, I think I can breathe a sigh of relief. Guess I'll update you tomorrow. I was so nervous. I was excited, but absolutely terrified, okay? We arrived, we landed in Phuket on the morning of the 16th of September. We spent most of the day getting to the hotel, checking in and getting used to the heat. And it is absolutely boiling hot over there. After that, we did a little bit of exploring, went to a mall or two, did a little bit of shopping. I almost got hit by a motorcycle, which was that scared the shit out of me. Our room was amazing. It had the most beautiful view. I remember walking onto the balcony at 6 p.m. and excitedly turning around to my mother and like ushering her over onto the balcony and just saying, bats, look, there's bats. Because so every night at 6 p.m. a huge flock of bats would come and just fly by outside our windows. And it became a bit of a tradition for us to, you know, have a drink at 6 p.m. and watch the bats. Obviously after surgery, you're not allowed to drink alcohol. So I was just drinking coconuts, but that's a very fond memory I have with my mother. Nevertheless, the next day, the 17th, was a Sunday, and it was really our only full day in Thailand free before going into the hospital. I was so nervous about the surgery that I could barely eat anything, but me and my mum had an amazing time and made so many memories. I'll never forget shopping and exploring through Patong City. It was awesome. But then the next morning, the 18th, was Monday. PPSI scheduled a taxi for us that arrived at 8 a.m. A half hour ride and we arrived at the hospital. I cannot describe how nervous I was. I was so terrified that something was going to go wrong and the surgery would be postponed for some reason. I was also terrified of the surgery itself. It was by far the most ambitious thing I'd ever done. I'd never even left New Zealand up to that point and I'd never been in hospital, I'd never had surgery. This was a lot of firsts for me and I was quite overwhelmed. So I wanna take this moment to tell you that you should be nervous. This is a huge surgery you're looking into. You should be nervous and that is okay. Don't let it freak you out, but it is a big scary thing and you should come to terms with it. Being nervous is very, very natural. So, we arrived in the hospital and there were a few hurdles for us to get through. The first thing that happened was they signed me in at the front desk. They took my photo, they looked at my passport, they took down all of my information, and then they did a blood test and a blood pressure test. And somewhat worryingly, my blood pressure came back very high. This was because I was very, very nervous. Now, the nurse has told me not to worry. It's not a huge deal at this stage. 
stage, but I could tell that they weren't very happy and that scared me a little bit. I then went in for my consultation with Dr. Sangwan. He did a brief examination and we decided on a small change of plans. Originally I had been wanting to get what they call a duodenal graft, which is an intestinal graft that they use to line the inside of a vagina. The main reason I had wanted this is because for most surgeons, and I assumed the same for Dr. Sangwan, a scrotal skin graft requires all of the hair to be removed. And for me, all my hair is blonde, which made it, which basically meant I had to get electrolysis. And if you don't know already, electrolysis is the most painful thing ever, especially on your private parts. So I decided way back while I was still in New Zealand that I would forgo that because I just didn't want to get electrolysis. So that's why I wanted to get the duodenal graft. However, Dr. Sanguin's method is a bit different to how the New Zealand surgeon does it. The New Zealand surgeon and a lot of surgeons around the world just do a flap of the scrotal skin. They actually don't fully remove it. However, Dr. Sanguin does it as a full graft. Fully removes all of the scrotal skin and he can actually scrape out all of the hair follicles while it's not attached to your body and then he implants the graft separately as a later op operation. Because he can remove the hair follicles while the graft is not attached to you, that does away with the need for electrolysis, which was great. So he was the expert and I went with his recommendation on that and it saved me about $5,000. Great. Following that, I signed a few papers and left to do some more tests for them. They were very thorough and I was quite impressed. They checked my heart, they x-rayed me, they did a bunch of other tests to make sure that I was healthy enough to undergo anesthesia. My blood pressure was still very high, which was secretly freaking me out a little bit, but they were happy enough to admit me to hospital. Following this, it was time to pay. Now, this was definitely where I made a mistake. Or rather, my bank did. Because I went to my bank a couple of months before my flight and I told them, hey, I'm going to Thailand soon and I'm going to need to make a $30,000 transaction on this here card. Is that gonna be okay? They told me yes. That was a lie. Because, thank God, I was paranoid and I decided to go back to another branch and ask again because that branch told me, oh, this is a debit card. This has a $10,000 limit. Which is a problem. Now, PBSI is very strict about payment, okay? They require payment up front before they will do anything at all even admit you to hospital. And you cannot pay over multiple days because you normally get admitted to hospital the day before your surgery. I'm not sure why this was the case, but it's a hard line at PPSI. I talked to my agent about this in a panic two weeks before my flight. In hindsight, I should have made an international bank transfer and taken care of it that way, but the deadline to do that was four weeks before the surgery and I had missed that, so I was in real trouble here. This was a whole load of stress that I didn't need. <laughs> Serious bad points for you, ASB Bank. Major bad. I literally checked two months in advance just to make sure it would be okay, and you fucking lied to me. Anyway, thankfully my family and I managed to devise a solution, a last ditch option. We took $10,000 in cash on the plane with us over to the hospital, and then we paid $10,000 on my debit card and $10,000 on my mother's debit card. And thankfully, that worked. But yeah, that was really scary, and that was a major stress leading up to my admittance. After we got that sorted, I calmed down a lot. And so I was officially admitted to hospital. I was taken up to, I think, the fifth floor from memory and shown to my room. It was beautiful. They have amazing hospital rooms, okay? It had an awesome hospital bed with the weird, like, you know, automatic adjustment thing. Um, they had a second bed, for a family member, we weren't aware that that was going to be a thing. We thought my mum would have to sleep in the hotel half an hour away. But they actually had a bed in the room for her, which was absolutely amazing. And it had an ensuite bathroom. It was fantastic. And I've got to say, the facilities at the hospital were absolutely fantastic. Aside from the food. So, we settled into our room, put all our things in the closets and drawers, and got comfortable. I got acquainted with the wild hospital bed. So weird, but I, kinda cool. Every hour or so, a nurse would come by and check my blood pressure, and it was starting to really worry me, actually. And it was a bit of a catch-22 as well, because I knew I needed to calm down to get my blood pressure down, but the fact that my blood pressure was high was freaking me out. On top of that, it was just a generally stressful situation and very emotional. I was talking to a lot of family who were bidding me farewell, so much, sending me so much love and so much luck, and I was reading all of your lovely comments of support and it was making me very emotional. At a certain point, I had to put all of my devices down, lie down, close my eyes, and just focus on breathing. In, out, in, out. And finally, finally, when they next checked my blood pressure, I was down to like 130. Here, here we go. 
here we are. We've made it into hospital. It was a bit of a trial, but you know, we got here. Um, we got here at about 8.30 in the morning. We've been doing some tests, some blood tests. They checked my heart and they're checking my blood pressure ongoing because I'm a little bit nervous. This is the hospital room. It actually, to be honest, it looks quite a lot like a hotel. It's quite beautiful. Um, we've got a huge space, two beds so my mum can sleep here. And we've even got an ensuite bathroom. So it's really nice and lovely. We've got room service. We just had some lunch. Everything went well with the tests. Um, I'm looking at having surgery at about 9.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, Thai time. So yeah, pretty nervous, looking forward to things and I'm no longer allowed to eat solids and I'm gonna have a whole bottle of laxatives to drink overnight, so that's not gonna be great. So wish me luck with that. Anyway, I brought a little friend. His name is Melvin. He's gonna keep me company because I couldn't bring KK along. She's too big. And I've also got my mum to keep me company. Here she is. Say hi. Hi there. I'm mum. I love her. <laughs> She's my, going to be my rock through all this. Anyway, I, um, I don't think I'll get a chance to record anything before the surgery, so I guess I'll see you on the other side. As you can tell from my voice cracking at the end of that clip there, I was really very emotional. Writing this script, recording this video, and re-watching all, all of my uh, video logs from while I was in hospital has been a, it's been quite a surreal experience, honestly. The next morning, 5.30 a.m., I was woken up and my blood pressure was taken. Every morning in a hospital, it was 5.30 a.m. wake up call for blood pressure. This was throughout the entire stay, 5.30 a.m., every morning. After the blood pressure test, I was given a drip. The anticipation I felt that morning was just mind melting. It felt like eons, just waiting, waiting, waiting for the team to come in and take me down to the operating theater. But eventually it happened, and the next 10 minutes still make me very, very emotional even now. A team of nurses came in, had me lying down, they moved me over onto a stretcher, and my mum stuck with me, holding my hand. She was just as nervous as I was, you know? She walked along with us, holding my hand as I was wheeled through the wards. And then I was pushed into this airlock type thing, the barrier between the publicly accessible hospital and the operating theater. But they didn't let my mum go in. Both of us started to freak out a little bit. I remember hearing my mum saying, can I please just say goodbye? And I was looking for her. She was outside of my field of view. Um, thank God, one of the lovely nurses ushered her in to say goodbye and my mum, my lovely mum came in, bent down over me, put her hands on my temples and kissed my forehead. <laughs> um, she said something like, I love you, good luck, I'll see you soon. I don't remember what I said back, <laughs> it was just a bawling mess at that stage. I think that's up there as probably the most difficult moment in my life on par with my, me actually coming out. The nurses held my hand the rest of the way, comforting me. They were awesome. They moved me onto the operating table and spread my arms out so that I was T-posing to assert my dominance one final time before they took my penis away from me. And I saw Dr. Sangwan come into the room. We had a brief chat. I remember saying to him, I trust you to be an artist. And I remember him saying back to me, thank you for having faith in us. Then they put a mask on my face and I was, you know, waiting for something, I don't know. I just noticed the roof spinning and I thought, oh, this is it. And that's all I remember. I went into the operating theater at 9.30 a.m. I woke up in the recovery room at about 5 p.m. And I was taken back to my room at 7 p.m. It was a long surgery, but it was a success. And now we're recording like that mm -hmm. and get a, yeah, a little bit further away, same sort of distance. Okay, it's the day after part one of the surgery. I came out of anesthetic at about, um, about six o'clock yesterday, Thai time, and it was pretty rough. Coming out of anesthetic was really hard. Um, my eyes were very stingy. I couldn't open them for very long. I was full of tears and my nose was running like crazy. On top of that, my, um, my coccyx is very sore. 
because I've been, obviously I was lying on my back on a plastic bed for quite a long time, unconscious, and basically that's really painful and it actually hurts more than the, than the actual site of the surgery itself. And I've been basically on my side for the last 10 hours. It's now almost eight o'clock. It's about 7.40. I'm doing a lot better now. My eyes have, have the swelling has gone down in my eyes. My coccyx is feeling a little bit better, but I'm still on my side. And I've had plenty of drugs throughout the night. <laughs> they had me on a morphine drip. And they just came in and gave me a quick bath. Feeling a little bit more like a human now, but I'm still very much bedridden. But all in all, the thing is gone. And I'm gonna be stuck in my hospital room for about three more days with my mum, with my lovely mum who's recording me at the moment. Right now I'm actually feeling pretty good. Um, I might need to ask for some more pain relief pretty soon, but um, right now I'm okay. Uh, yeah, and um, I'm allowed to eat again. I've... So we've ordered some breakfast. Um, I should be getting some pancakes soon, which is nice and feeling positive, feeling very positive. I'll, um, I'll try check in with how I'm feeling tomorrow as well. But until then, <laughs> I'm doing all right. Hey everyone. Um, it's, this is day four, including the surgery. Um, I've, it's been pretty rough and I haven't really felt up to recording an update the last couple of days. Just in between nausea, my butt being bruised and um, all sorts of small things happening. So I thought I'd do a quick little video update now and um, tell you a little bit about what's happened in the last few days. Honestly, the first two days after anesthesia, I don't remember much. Um, it was pretty, pretty blurry. Um, with my eyes swollen and watering, my nose running, um, throat dry, everything. It's just kind of didn't make it to my memory. So a couple interesting things happened yesterday. Um, my coccyx has healed a little bit, so I've been able to sit up, which is really, really good. Um, I was going a little bit crazy being stuck on my sides all the time because I can't use my laptop if I'm lying down on my side. Other thing interesting that happened is that they, um, they, the nurses and the doctor got me up and walking for a, a couple minutes in the morning, which was very, very nice. I mean, it felt so good to actually be mobile and to get out of this goddamn bed. Um, there's a bunch of stuff I have to disconnect to go walking. I've got a, I've got a catheter tube and I've also got this weird suction tube going into, um, going, well, basically it sucks out the blood that's pooling. Um, good news about that particular suction tube is that it is no longer pulling blood, which I'm going to take as meaning that I'm not bleeding anymore, which is good. But um, I did have a little bit of a scary moment last night, right when I went to bed. Throughout the day, I got up to walk a couple of times, but um, right before I went to bed, I got up to go brush my teeth and I um, tried to sit down on the toilet and obviously I stretched a bandage a little bit too much and I started leaking a little bit on the floor. Not much, just, you know, a, a couple of drops and it was watered down blood, it didn't, it was more brown, if anything, but um, that was definitely a little bit scary. I had was just trying to keep my breathing calm, got back to bed, lied down, and one of the doctors came in and they spent half an hour looking at me, tugging around on the tubes, but then they said, yeah, no, you're okay, which was a relief. <laughs> 
and um, then I actually managed to get some sleep last night because I had a sleeping pill. Now today is going to be interesting. Um, today is part two of three of the operation now. This is a pretty minor part. All they're doing is they're going to take me down, they're going to put me on some gas, and they're going to replace the packing on the inside of my vagina. Basically just replacing the bandages. And then I'll come back here and then on the Monday. On the mon today is Friday. On the Monday, they they're gonna put the graft in. That's the last part of the operation. Again, that's pretty minor. That's that one is gonna be under anesthesia. That'll be about an hour. But it should be a lot more simple than it should be way easier than the first operation, which was eight hours. Um, but after that, I'm going to be stuck in bed for three days, so that's going to be pretty rough. But I'm just, to be quite honest, today I'm just looking forward to getting back from having my packing changed out so that I can drink again because I haven't been allowed to eat or drink anything since 6 a.m. and it's now almost 11, so I'm pretty damn thirsty. But um, yeah, all in all, you know, it's, it's scary, it's a really tough process. I would definitely say getting the surgery is not for the faint of heart. This has by far been the most brutal experience I've had in my life. But um, I'm, I'm doing okay and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep getting through this and I just gotta make it through these next couple of weeks. And um, I think that's really all I've got to say for now. I suppose I'll um, try and make another update when I can. So it is, I think, day five since the main surgery. Yesterday I had all my packing changed out and the bandages replaced. And as you can see, I'm up and walking about. I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I gotta be pretty slow and quite careful, but I am actually feeling more and more mobile with every day, which is really awesome because the days I spent absolutely stuck in bed were, um, really hard but i'm feeling a lot better now and i'm just glad that i can get up and walk around at the moment the main problem is that i haven't pooped in six days hopefully we'll sort that out <laughs> but um yeah hope we come over here and we'll have a look out the window it's about 7 p.m here in thailand on september the 24th third or something, I'm not sure. Um, and out here we've got a lovely view of the cockpit. I can't go there anymore. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, it's, a, it's, it's quite fun seeing all these lights outside my window. So it's a lovely little hospital room, as you can see. And um, basically state of the affairs is that right now I'm actually feeling really good. Um, uh, the day after tomorrow, they're going to be applying the skin graft. And then after that, I'm completely bedridden for three days. So now and tomorrow, I'm absolutely just gonna make the most of being able to walk around because I'm gonna be stuck for another three days after that. But yeah, feeling good at this stage. I'll, um, I'll check in when next I can. How's it going, guys, girls, and pals? I'm Alice Model and your favorite Kimmy trans girl, and I am, I think, what is this? Seven days, six days post surgery? I'm not sure, but tomorrow I go in for the last part at 10.30 a.m. They're gonna take me in. I'll be under anesthesia for about an hour, maybe two hours, and they'll apply the scrotal skin graft. And following that, it's three days of bed rest, and then at some point I'll take all the packing out and I'll be good to go. But, you know, things are going pretty good. I finally managed to poop this morning after fucking six days. Um, so that was a relief. <laughs> but I'm feeling really good at the moment. I've been able to walk around a fair bit. Um, I thought I'd talk about a couple, couple things from my experience so far in this hospital. The hospital is beautiful. As you can see, the room is massive. It's gorgeous. We've got a window right there. We've got an ensuite bathroom. The food is 
questionable. I'll, I'll elaborate on that more in post, but um, definitely a few items on the menu I would <laughs> stray away from. Um, they seem to cover everything in glad wrap, which is very interesting. But um, the other thing I wanted to say is I just wanted to give a big, huge thank you to the woman behind the camera right now, because honestly, I couldn't have done this without my mum. And yeah, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Smile for the camera. Uh, hi. <laughs> I know she's a bit camera shy, but seriously, I could not have done this on my own. I've still got so far to go, but I need, I needed my mum. Mm -hmm. Lovely. I love you, mum. Everyone, look at me. I'm walking around. <laughs> Oh my god, it has been, I think, nine or ten days since the big major surgery, and um, a few days ago I got the graft put in, and I've had to suffer through three days, stuck in bed, recovering as the graft sits, but now, this morning, just this morning, huge update, the doctor came in, unplugged everything, my catheter, my vacuum, my bandages, the packing, the IV drip, and I'm up and about. And I have a vagina. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm, I'm so stoked. Look, now, tomorrow they're gonna teach me how to dilate and how to take care of it in the near and distant future. But um, yeah, I mean, that's the worst of it done. As you can see, I'm up and I'm walking about now. Wow. So. How has this all been so far? Well, as I said in previous updates, my coccyx was really sore and the first two to three days of recovery were absolute hell for me. Uh, without question, the hardest thing I've ever been through. And if I hadn't had my mum with me, I, I might have been in serious trouble. But since then, it's been pretty good. The honest truth is that, and believe it or not, my vagina doesn't hurt at all. Like. It, it, it boggles my mind. I was on morphine for the first night, but ever since then I've just been on basically paracetamol. And it doesn't hurt. My, my coccyx hurts more than, my, than the surgery site, which is just unbelievable. But um, yeah, I'm really lucky. It's gone amazingly. I've got to say the nurses are absolutely fantastic. There's a little bit of a language barrier, you know, obviously English is not their first language, but make no mistake, they are smart and they will figure out what you need and they help you. Like, they have been so, so good to me and they've been so nice and so friendly and yeah, I have nothing but positive words to say about them. Things are going well and with a bit of luck, I'll be discharged in a few days. Now you've seen all of that, I'm just gonna add a bit more context. The first 12 hours coming out of anesthesia were an absolute nightmare. Um, and I want to preface this by saying that obviously this has nothing to do with PPSI. This is just a fact about surgery in general. Um, I've never felt worse in my life, though it is to be expected. Anesthesia is no joke, and I was under for 8 or 9 hours. I don't remember much of the next 12 hours. Um, I remember returning to my room at about 7pm and seeing my mum again. That was a huge relief. My throat was agony, my butt was agony. The surgery area, however, was completely painless, and I was- I did not understand that at all. I was- I was so surprised from that. No pain whatsoever from my new vagina. Just, like, everywhere else. <laughs> it was rough. The most difficult 12 hours of my life, by far. It was awful. And I was so thirsty. My throat was so dry and painful, and I kept asking for more and more water. And my poor old mum took such good care of me. I couldn't have gotten through it without her, honestly. Um, Unfortunately, I drank too much water and ended up vomiting, just to make matters worse. <laughs> so some of you have probably gone through a big surgery before, but for those of you like me that had never gone into surgery, this is your first time, anesthesia is no joke. You will feel like absolute death when you wake up. Possibly my experience was worse than most because of my bruised coccyx, but also at the same time my surgery area didn't hurt, so maybe yours will be worse in that regard. And on another note, please God, 
If there is one takeaway I have from all of this, it is that you need a support person. I could not have done that alone. I was terrified, I was scared, I was in agony, I was dreary, I couldn't see. Having my mother there to comfort me and take care of me was absolutely pivotal. It was vital. I seriously could not have done it without her. I would have had a complete mental breakdown and things could have gotten very bad. She kept me calm, she reassured me, and she was always right by my bedside in case I needed something. And that's another thing as well. The nurses are great and they're there at your beck and call, but they are down down the hallway. They're at, they're at their little nursing station. You know, you press the clicker and it'll take them a minute to get to you. But if you have a support person in the room with you, they are right there. They can help you immediately. To you, the viewer, I beg of you, bring a support person. Do everything you can to have a support person with you. You might think you're tough enough. I thought I would be, but there were moments in those first few days where I wasn't sure I could make it. When you go through a huge surgery like this, whatever that surgery may be, you need support. I cannot overstate how important that is. This shit is hard. It is difficult. Do everything you can to have someone that is not squeamish. Someone that is willing to help and care for you when you are at your absolute lowest. I know that some of you might not have that readily available to you and all that I can say about that is that I am so, so sorry. This is going to be really, really hard for you. I would say by 8am the day after the surgery, the worst of it had passed. What followed was three more very difficult days of constant nausea, which was almost as bad. The morning after surgery, they took me off morphine, and after that I was just on paracetamols, and anti-inflammatories, and sleeping pills every night. And I did fine. The pain was totally manageable with just that, and if I didn't have a bruised coccyx, to be honest, it would have been a walk in the park. The main problem I was dealing with was the nausea that came with morphine withdrawal. It lasted for about three to four days and it was crippling. I couldn't eat at all. I couldn't manage more than one or two mouthfuls every hour. It was awful, it was brutal. But at the same time, and I'll say it again, this is very normal for any major surgery. This isn't a comment on PPSI, the doctors, the nurses, or the surgery that I've gotten. This is just what getting surgery is like in general, and you should be prepared for this. Thankfully, the nurses were absolutely amazing, and whenever I felt like I was really sick, felt like I was gonna throw up, I'd buzz the nurses, and they'd come in, I'd say nausea, they'd come back with a little little syringe full of some weird clear liquid and I had my IV was like this weird quick port thing and then plug the little syringe into that pump it in and BAM instant relief for about three hours I, I want that clear stuff still whatever that whatever that drug was I want it can you imagine every time you have the flu and you feel like you're gonna vomit you just <sighs> on I think the second or third day including the surgery the nurses came in and actually got me up and walking. I was told by Dr. Sangwan that I should be as active as I could, and from there I made it a point to try and, you know, walk the length of the hospital room a couple times every other hour. But I got tired so quickly. It was amazing to me just how weak I was all of a sudden. I didn't know at that time, but I weighed myself upon my discharge, and it turns out that I actually lost about five kilograms in those first three days. That's pretty extreme weight loss. Now, on the 22nd, I was taken back into the operating theater for a small operation. I was just under gas for one hour. They changed out the packing and all the bandages, made sure everything was all right. Now, we originally thought it would be quicker, but the graft was only done on the 25th of September. That's six days after the main operation. But it too was another simple operation. It was just two hours under gas. I actually woke up from that procedure feeling really, really good. I felt like everything was back how it was supposed to be. I felt like I was back in one piece, finally. Following the graft, you need to remain in bed for three days just so that the graft can meld properly. You don't want to be disturbing it by walking about. Another thing, and this is a little bit gross, pooping is both scary and difficult. I went six days without pooping. And then suddenly and without warning, I pooped a lot. And it'll probably happen while you're still confined to bed, so bedpan time. Be prepared for that, it's gonna be real gross. Anyway, on the 28th of September, nine days after the main op, and three days after the graft, Dr. Sangwan came in and really with very little fanfare or theatrics, just unplugged everything, removed all of the bandages, and I was free. The graft had melded and was looking really good, and I was now allowed to roam the hospital freely on my own. Um, I got up and I was able to walk around the hospital with my mum. I also did a walk later just completely on my own, which was amazing! I was actually, I actually had autonomy again. Uh, now one thing you'll need to be prepared for, is for the first few weeks you are going to leak a lot. Bring pads and bring period panties, just do it. And yeah, for the first time, I got to see my vagina. 
And this is a little bit where the fairy tale ends, because I was immediately a little bit alarmed. Dr. Sanguine and I had a good conversation about this. He showed it to me, he pointed all the bits out, you know, my labia minora, my labia majora, here's the clitoris, blah blah blah. Um, but he let me know that we would need to wait and see how it healed and how all of the swelling went down before we could make a judgement on, on whether, you know, it looked good or whatever. Um, it was extremely swollen at the time, like unbelievably swollen. At that stage it is not at all representative of the final product. He let me know there was a chance that the labia majora might actually not go down enough with the swelling and I might find that the tops of the labia majora are too far apart. Now thankfully I could get a second surgery to get that fixed and make it look really good, bring them closer together if needed, but it couldn't be done right then because of blood flow and blood vessel issues. The aesthetic issue was mainly at the top of the vagina, like very the top, right around where my penis used to be. Um, however, from my labia minora down, it actually looks quite amazing. It's really convincing. Um, and as time goes on, it's just looked better and better. The swelling has gone down an unbelievable amount. It's actually shocking to think that what I have used to look like that in hospital. But yeah, from the labia minora down, I am so happy. It looks amazing. I'm really pleased with that. <laughs> so I look good in doggy style. However, unfortunately, the labia majora issue hasn't quite gone away with swelling, so I need to go back and get that revision surgery. It's really, it's actually really a very small revision, and it's not one I'm particularly bothered about, and I should look really good after that, so. It is what it is, I suppose. Now, one other thing as well, be prepared, because it's gonna be really fucking gross for the first few weeks, okay? Um, for those first few weeks, your vagina is, in essence, an open wound, and it is going to be gross. You're going to get scabbing, You're going to, it's going to be all slimy, it's going to be red, there's going to be blood, there's going to be pus. Be prepared. It's fucking gross, okay? But, you know, now where I am at three and a half months healed, it looks a lot more healthy. I mean, like, my inside is a nice tender pink. It's, it's nice, it's nice. Anyway, I spent two more days in hospital. Uh, during which time I was taught how to dilate and how to take care of myself and I was discharged on the 1st of October to the hotel. Uh, I would then go on to spend the next 10 days at the hotel, slowly healing and recovering. I went back for a post-op check on the 7th and I was cleared for my return home flight on the 10th. Okay, so I haven't recorded anything in a while. I'm sorry. <laughs> um... I still not really been feeling super up to it. Today is the 7th of October, so it's been a while since I made any sort of recording or vlog on my surgery. But um, to summarize, I suppose, the first big thing was that on the 1st of October I got discharged from hospital. And I came back to the hotel and I've kind of just been taking care of myself from there. I haven't done much, I haven't really been feeling up to much, I'm very low energy and I've just been sort of chilling in the hotel occasionally enjoying a, you know, a, a non-alcoholic drink on the balcony, which is lovely, which is what I'm doing now. Let me show you the view. It's quite beautiful out there. Um, but today's a bit of a big day because I just had my post-op consultation with Dr. Sangren. And, um, I'm all clear. I'm all done, you know, that's, that's it. All went well, I'm looking good, I'm healing really quickly, the graft is set, I'm still swollen as hell and super ugly, but um, all is looking pretty good and it's kind of surreal. I feel really light, like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I haven't really had the opportunity to feel any um, euphoria yet because I'm still very much in make sure everything goes right mode. So I haven't really had that no-cock euphoria yet, but um, I may feel it soon because, well, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. The flight home is in three days and I'm just sitting here and to celebrate my uh, being done, I'm having a coconut on the balcony. I've just discovered coconut. And trust me, it is so good. I love coconut. I'm losing my mind, honestly. It's it's so good. I, I can't understand how this shit just grows on trees. I had the following guidelines from Dr. Sangwon as of the 1st of October. 
I could run slash exercise again after four weeks. I could have sex after eight weeks. I would be able to sit normally after eight to 10 weeks. And I would actually be able to swim as soon as I stopped leaking fluids which was likely eight weeks also. So if, if you wanna have an idea of recovery time, that's what, lo what you're looking at. But um, in terms of swelling, and swelling is gonna be your main enemy in healing. I mean, you, you may have pain as well. Obviously, I didn't have to deal with that, but my main enemy throughout my entire healing process has been swelling. Even now, I'm still massive down there. It's a, it's a lot closer to being you know pretty and smooth and all stuff now than it was in hospital, but that's been my main issue and the swelling can take six months to look normal again and you're not gonna be fully healed until about a year. So expect a lot of swelling and expect it to last a long, long time. Hey all, today is my and my mum's last day in Thailand and it's over. Suffice to say this has been a pretty amazing, unbelievable, adventure, experience, terrifying nosedive into uh, surgical processes that I didn't, that I possibly didn't quite comprehend the seriousness of. <laughs> but we've come out of it. I'm feeling great. My mum's feeling great. I think quite simply it can be summed up by saying this is the most difficult but also the most amazing thing I've done in my life. And I'm glad I did it. So. Tonight we're going to be packing and then tomorrow early on we get in a taxi and we get to the airport and we get the hell out of here. And to be honest, I'm really looking forward to it. Thailand is beautiful, but it's a lot and it's really hot and I miss my cats and my dad and my recording setup and everything. I'm looking forward to being home as much as I've loved this place. Now, I suppose on to me and my recovery. How am I doing? Now, at this stage, I'm, a, I'm approaching two weeks post the final op, which was the skin graft. Pretty simply said, I'm doing well. You know, I lost a lot of weight and I'm, I'm trying to put that back on. So I'm, I'm feeling I'm, I'm much weaker than I used to be. As time goes on, I get more and more strong. I've been able to go out f where, where I used to only be able to manage 15, 20 minute walks. Last night, I was out for hours and you know, the last couple of days, I've actually been feeling well enough where me and my mum can go out and do touristy things, like getting my teeth whitened. But, uh, <laughs> um, that was a fun little, that was a fun little side quest, but, uh, no, we've been doing touristy things for the last couple of days, and I'm feeling good, you know, I'm up and about, I'm not having any trouble, peeing is fine, everything is fine, I feel like I'm approaching a new normal. I'll leave future Alice to explain the complexities of dilation. All I'll say right now is, you know, it's going really well for me. It's not that bad, no pain. It's just time consuming. Um, that's fine, obviously I'm on holiday. I've got as much time as I need. Um, but yeah, there's a reason why they say you should take at least six weeks off because you really need those first six weeks <laughs> to figure out how you're dilating. And by the end of the six weeks, is only really then does it take little enough time that you can actually fit it into a work schedule. But right now, you know, I'm probably spending, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes a day doing my dilation. It takes a long time, but I just chuck on a YouTube video and get it done. It's easy. It's fine. It's not really that big a deal. And, uh, and with a bit of luck in a few months time, it'll only take like 10, 15 minutes a day. So. Looking good on that front. But yeah, I'm looking forward to going home and seeing where my recovery goes from there. But yeah, that was more or less my journey in Thailand. Goodbye, hotel. Thailand. 
Пожалуйста, немедленно идентифицируйте себя для регистрации багажа у выхода 12 и 12. Спасибо. going Alice here again as you can see I'm uh, back in New Zealand everything is uh, everything's going well I've even just got done recording a new video so you know things are going more and more back to normal um, today is I believe the 27th of October so I'm actually I'm a little over four weeks post-surgery now and I've been back in New Zealand since the 10th, so a little over two and a half weeks. I, I would have recorded another update earlier, but I honestly wasn't feeling that up to it. So I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on how things are at four weeks post-surgery, okay? So, first things first. Before we left Thailand, the last couple of days, I was feeling amazing. I felt really good. So good, in fact, that we managed to go out and do some touristy things, which was really awesome. It was. You know, it was, it was good to do, but um, the plane flight was not good. The plane flight was bad for me. To put it simply, spending essentially up to 22 hours in travel mode, basically in my mind and in my body, and spending what was more or less a total of 18 or 19 hours sitting down on my pelvic region immediately after surgery, was really bad. I would say I probably lost about nine days of recovery progress. I'm, I'm, I'm back at where I was before, but it was bad. Like, so be, be ready for that if you're doing the surgery like I am, if you're going overseas, because the flight is gonna be rough for you. It's normal, it's to be expected, but it's definitely demoralizing to get back home and to see your swelled up, you know, twice the size as you were before you went on the flight. But I'm back where I was now. It, it took me about two weeks of, you know, having to waddle everywhere before I got my kind of my mobility back again. Um, and there was definitely a lot of, um, definitely lost a lot of dilation progress. We're back, we're doing really well. And at four weeks, the, um, I guess, I guess I'll give you an update on the actual medical situation. So the last, the last two weeks have been kind of a nothing for me. I've not really been able, I've not had the energy, I've not had the mobility, and I've not really done a hell of a lot. It's been a lot for me just to be sitting down making videos and stuff. It's good to get back into routine, but it is a lot. And I definitely feel restricted by my energy levels. Nevertheless, in terms of healing, the last two weeks have been pretty impressive. I'm still dealing with a lot of swelling. The swelling is pretty much as it was three weeks ago. And I'm really excited for that to come down. But um, I would say that the outside, the outside of my new vagina is um, mostly unchanged. There's a couple of bits where the swelling has gone down enough where I can see the scars now, which is really interesting. But for the most part, it's still really swollen. It looks really big, etc., etc. So it still doesn't look any, doesn't look pretty. The inside of it is looking really good now. It's actually, it's just you know, it's a light pink, as it's supposed to be, and you know that's really good to see. You know, throughout this whole thing, dilation, dilation has been easy, no pain. It's just time consuming. The leaking that I was talking about before has gone down a lot. Um, I'm able to get away with wearing pretty much one pad, one or two pads a day now, which is good. Um, a lot of things, are, a lot of a lot of progress is being made. Just gonna wait for the swelling to go down, and then I can wear skimpy underwear. I'm really, really excited for that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm back home. I'm feeling good. I'm actually back at work next week. God only knows how that'll go. I'm still, I'm still having a lot of trouble sitting down. I can't seem to sit upright for very long before the swelling kind of 
increases and I start to get worried. So I'm probably going to work half days for a while and do a lot of work from home until I'm feeling better, but um, things are going well. Things are going really well. Pretty much the uh, state of things right now. I'm just really excited for the swelling to go down. Possibly a little bit TMI, but uh, it feels good. You know, like it, you know, in, in the, in the kind of adult sense, it feels good. Anyway, I'll, uh, <laughs> I probably won't make any more updates until I'm actually recording the actual video. So, I guess I'll see you in the future. Anyway, now for the recovery at home, which basically leads us to now. The bottom line is that my swelling has gone down a lot, but it is still quite extreme and will take another three months to go down fully. And unfortunately, the reduction in swelling hasn't brought my labia majora as close together as I would have would have liked. Um, so I do need to go back and get that minor revision surgery. I came to that decision about a month ago, and honestly, it was it was a pretty crippling realization. Um, it, it threw me into a bit of a depressive spiral, not gonna lie. I really thought I could have been done, but I'm just not happy with how it looks. Um, the fact I have to go back, even if it's for a small revision, does scare me. Um, but I don't really have a choice in my eyes. Uh, I'm gonna get this done, and fuck, I reckon I might as well get a breast augmentation while I'm there. But, um, I'm gonna get, get it done, I'm gonna come out of this as the hottest bitch on the planet. But unfortunately this does mean I'm gonna have to backtrack on my statement that I made in this video. I am no longer debt free. Which is, yeah, kind of hurts a little bit. I'm having to take out another loan and want to pay for my flights and for the revision surgery as well as any other surgeries I want to get while I'm over there. So I'm sorry, I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but if you want to continue to support me and help me get these surgeries and bring bring you more information, uh, my Buy Me Coffee link is in the description and I've enabled super chats and memberships on my YouTube channel if you'd rather support me that way. Once I get my revision surgery done, then I'm going to make my final conclusion on getting surgery in Thailand. So stay tuned, that'll be later this year. If you'd like to help me get there, as I mentioned, link's in the description. Anyway, I don't want to be a downer, there are some really great things about my surgery that I'm really happy about, even if I do have to go back. For starters, and I'm not exaggerating here, it feels better than it did before. Sexual stimulation, both penetrative and external, is mind-blowing. It's fucking awesome. I haven't been able to orgasm yet, it's still a bit too tender to get quite that far, but um... I know I'll have no trouble once I'm a bit more healed. Like, <laughs> I've gotten close. <laughs> also, and this is possibly TMI, but it's just something I found really interesting that, that I'm curious to hear if other people have experienced, but um, I may not have been able to orgasm while awake, but I've had more wet dreams in the last three months than I'd had in my entire life prior to surgery. Like, ten times as many in, as I had in my entire life prior to surgery. I don't know how that works, or if anyone else has experienced that, but I had a wet dream two fucking nights after my main surgery. And another one a few days before I was discharged from hospital, and from there it's been a fairly regular thing. All of these times I was able to owe from a dream, so... I don't know how that works, I just find it interesting. I'd be interested to hear if anyone else has experienced that, because... This seems like a really weird phenomenon to have that happening two days after a major surgery. Anyway, I'm also able to wear beautiful lingerie and swimsuits now, a huge bonus for me since I am obsessed with lingerie. I would call myself a bit of a lingerie enthusiast, and in fact, if it was more accepted, I would probably post lingerie pics. I've also been able to go swimming for the first time in three years since I originally transitioned. I, you know, this is the first time I felt comfortable enough in swimsuits to actually go for a swim, and it's fucking amazing because I'm a summer gal and I love the hot weather and I love swimming and all that kind of stuff. That has been awesome. I have loved that so much. So, fuck yeah, I feel the sexiest I have ever been, and after my revision surgery, I'm gonna be even better. So, watch the fuck out, alright?